Hello, and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras, here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. Late last night, a Syrian military base in Aleppo was pummeled by a round of airstrikes. Israel is widely believed to be behind the attack, though as per policy, the army has offered no comment on the matter. Anywhere from six to nine pro-regime fighters have been reported killed in the blast. This base is also heavily linked with Iranian proxy forces, which may explain the site's significance as a target to the IDF. If Israel is indeed behind these airstrikes, it would be a somewhat significant departure from past strategies. Israeli jets have been reported in attacks in southern and central Syria, but rarely does the IAF venture as far north into enemy territory as Aleppo. Still, this is the same base that Israel is believed to have struck back in April, and it comes at a crucial moment in the ever-shifting tides of Middle East policy. Last week, Prime Minister Netanyahu met with Russian President Vladimir Putin to discuss Israel's security concerns in Syria. And today, United States President Donald Trump will also meet with Putin at the Russia-United States summit in Helsinki. Netanyahu has likely lobbied Trump hard to stress Israel's interest with the Russian president. American officials, however, speculate that Trump may choose to avoid the touchy topic of Syria altogether during his meeting with Putin. If that's the case, then a supposed Israeli airstrike in Aleppo like this would definitely send a message to Russia that Israel is prepared to look out for itself. This meeting also comes days after special counsel Robert Mueller's indictment of 12 Russian nationals from the GRU Russian Federation Intelligence Agency. The Russian nationals are charged with hacking the DNC servers during the 2016 presidential election in order to sway the election in favor of Trump. For now, it remains to be seen, though, whether Trump or Putin will address the elephant in the room during their talks, or how this will affect Middle East policy in the weeks to come. Following heavy opposition and protest to a contentious clause in the nation-state bill, Prime Minister Netanyahu and Education Minister Naftali Bennett have come to an agreement on that clause. Article 7b essentially allows for communities to discriminate on the basis of religion, nationality, and more. Now, the revised phrasing is, quote, the state views the development of Jewish settlement as a national value and will act to encourage and promote its establishment, end quote. The new language is a hard turn towards the very potentially discriminatory practices that the opposition has warned against. Now, establishing Jewish-only settlements would be completely legal and non-discriminatory as part of realizing the Zionist dream. Arabic would also be downgraded to a second language status, which would not require government forms and services to be provided in Arabic. The bill with its new language now needs to be approved by Knesset committee before it hits the Knesset floor for a vote later this evening. The IDF has just sent a very clear message to Hamas that the country is prepared for war if need be. Additional Iron Dome batteries have just been deployed to Tel Aviv as well as regions of southern Israel. The army has also summoned reservists from the Air Defense Corps to man the effort. Though this is all precautionary, the mere gesture is a demonstration of Israel's readiness for war in any situation. This defense boost follows perhaps the most turbulent weekend between Israel and Palestinians in Gaza since the 2014 war Operation Protective Edge. Over the weekend, terrorists hurled some 174 rockets into Israeli territory. An Israeli family of four in the city of Sterot was injured by shrapnel when a rocket struck their home without warning. Israeli jets retaliated in full force, striking at least 40 known Hamas targets within the Strip. Two Palestinian teenagers are said to have been killed in the airstrikes. After 48 hours of escalations that threatened to erupt into war, Egypt reportedly entered the equation to broker an emergency ceasefire. A day later, that deal still does appear to be holding. But the issue of Palestinians flying firebombs over the border using homemade kites threatens to undo the temporary silence. Israeli leaders and army officials are split over whether or not to use lethal force to deter these arson attacks. On one hand, the incendiary kites are a dangerous breach of a ceasefire truce. On the other hand, more Palestinian casualties may fuel the flames of war. For now, Israelis near the borders are just trying to resume their daily lives and hoping for things to get back to normal. In other terror-related news, the IDF security forces arrested at least 19 Palestinians overnight. In addition to the suspects, the IDF police and Sheen Beit found a large cache of firearms and thousands of shekels in cash intended for funding Palestinian terror. Violent riots broke out in response to the early morning raids, and soldiers quelled the riot with non-lethal means. No injuries were reported. In a separate incident, multiple suspects were seen trying to enter Israel illegally last night, and when approached by IDF forces, some fled back into the West Bank and some entered Israel and ran. One Palestinian was arrested already with bolt cutters for the fence, a Barbie backpack with a submachine gun in it, and a cell phone. 
Golden State Warrior and NBA champion Draymond Green was just spotted in Israel with his family on vacation. And the trip was reportedly organized by the Friends of the IDF organization, and while here, Green met with President Rivlin, where he presented him with a jersey, and trained with the Israeli police, playing basketball with members of its Yamam counterterrorism unit. Not everyone is so happy about the visit, though. After posting a picture holding a rifle, many have begun to accuse Green of insensitivity. Allegations of the IDF and not the FIDF sponsoring the trip have also begun to circulate. But the FIDF Midwest Region Executive Director Tamir Oppenheim said the FIDF recognized how valuable Green's support is as he's a role model for millions. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.